The word sustainability and sustainable ways, we have been speaking about it in many ways. But what is the essentiality here is that we reduce the wastage of resources, which is a very, very big plus. The circular economy fits directly into more general framework of sustainable development. In this process, we try to overspend the budget and we also try to create a serious impact against the nature. Good morning and welcome to the first session, Chapter 1, Unit 4, Second Semester, BBA, Sustainable Development, where we are going to speak about circular economy. Now, the word circular economy itself has got a lot of significance. Probably what you might have learned in your basic economics is about the economy, which consists of a producer and a consumer, which keeps on going around in a circle. Now, we're not going to change that dimensions, really. But what we are going to look in here is that exact meaning of circular economy. Now, this is an economy that refers to a model whose objective is to produce goods and services in a sustainable way by limiting the consumption and waste, I mean the raw materials and the resources altogether. Now what are we actually trying to do here is that we want the circular economy to be in such a manner where the objective itself, the purpose of this economy is to see that we produce the goods and services in a most sustainable manner. The word sustainability and sustainable ways, we have been speaking about it in many ways. But what is the essentiality here is that we reduce the wastage of resources, which is a very, very big plus that we are talking about. Well, the second thing, it is breaking with the model of a linear economy based on take make consume through away pattern by proposing a transform waste into recycled raw material for a product design and other uses. And this is very, very important for all of us to understand here the circular economy pattern. When I talk about the meaning of circular economy, I want to break away from the linear economy factor altogether. When I say that word, a linear economy, that means to say that this is more about, you know, make, take and throw it away back to the nature. Now, the question that comes to the mind of people is that if it's just going to be a make, take and throw away kind of a factor, where is that we are as a faculty, we are as a members, we are as the society, citizens of this great society, trying to understand to make this earth more sustainable. So in a circular manner, we want to go back, we want to get the products back into the circle, we want to get back into a sustainability. So the same product which has been thrown as a waste has to be recycled somewhere. So it is very important that we spend time in terms of doing that. So coming back to the circular economy, this is where we are been talking about the recycling pattern altogether. So at some point of time, if that recycling pattern is going to come into picture and we are going to be really transforming the society as per the thought process, that means to say that we have to make this economy break away from that linear model to that of a circular model altogether. The next thing is that the circular economy fits directly into more general framework of sustainable development. Why? Because in the word sustainability, when we were talking about that sustainability factor, it is all about giving back to the society, coming back in that same circle. Why? Because we want to give back the society the best thing that we have already taken it from. We destroyed the nature in the name of development. We destroyed the entire system in the name of progress. But today, when we have to give it back to the society, this is going to be slightly challenging for most of us. Why? Because we might start thinking that how to rebuild the green economy that we are speaking about. The green economy is possible only if you are going to start thinking from an ecological eco design functionality, which means you need to recycle each and everything back. You cannot be a kind of personality where you would start taking things so simply. 
Now, this is where it matters a lot. This is where it matters a lot. Why? Because it believes very, very clearly here that when we are talking about the system, this is where we want to give back the nature. We want to give a breathing time. We want to make the planet even more sustainable. We want to make it greener so that the reduction in wastage is immediately followed. The next one, we're going to talk about the circular economic principles, which are very, very important for all of us to understand here. So starting here, let's first talk about sustainable procurement, which is very important. Development and implementation of a responsible purchasing policy. Offline, it is very, very important for all of us to understand over a period of time, the companies as well as the households have spent a lot of money in purchasing goods just because they have felt the convenience of availability of these goods. So what has been an order of the day is that just you log into your mobile phone and you keep on purchasing that's available online. Now that is actually what is happening is you are accumulating goods and one fine morning when you suddenly start finding that these have become wastage, you want to dump it back on the society, on the system. Now that's the same thing that happens even from the industry standpoint. We dump a huge amount of raw material, resources and every other factors there. Now that will actually lead to confusion, that will actually lead to a lot of problem. So we don't want a system like that. We want a system which has a very, very responsible procurement methodology, a system where we are able to understand why we need to purchase certain items, why we need to have a stock of this inventory. And yes, if there is a cost involved in that, yes, there is an activity involved in that, why? That has to be brought into picture, how we need to maintain it, how we can reduce, reuse, redesign the entire system. That's what we have been talking about in terms of the sustainable procurement. Now, moving forward, when we are talking about the eco design, the process of reducing the environmental factors, that is in terms of the impact of a product or the service throughout the life cycle, this is even more interesting. Why? Because when you develop a product, we all know the utility value of the product and that's what we have been speaking about in economics. We always talk about the utility value. The utility value is so interesting these days that most of us are just carried away by the product. We believe that an electronic gadget like an iPhone or let's say that we look into a smartwatch can probably carry us throughout our life. But off late, we started understanding that that's, that's merely an electronic gadget. That's just a machine that cannot become the part of life every day. So what we do is that we just throw that product back onto the nature. Now that has an environmental impact. That has an environmental hazard that has been created there. So on the long run, what happens here is that that product might create a damage again. So we want to see what is the impact of a product and the service line factors throughout its life cycle. So in the long run, are we able to create a design which is ecological, which is friendly to the environment, which is basically a nature born environment altogether. So that's exactly what we are looking into. Now redesigning doesn't mean that you are ecological friendly or you know you are just refurbishing the item doesn't mean that you become a green manufacturer. What exactly classifies you to be a nature friendly and eco friendly personality is that you are able to recycle the product, reduce the usage, reduce the wastage of inventory and make it as simple as possible. That exactly classifies you as a green manufacturer. Now, the next thing is that the industrial and the territorial ecology. Now, this is very, very important. Why? Because search for industrial ecology synergizes. The ecology actually comes at the scale of business area, which is very, very important. And the waste of one company can become the resource of another. What a wonderful statement that one has to understand, one has to go through completely here. Why I would say this is that, let's take for a while, the industrial waste of certain companies could definitely become a source of inventory for many other companies across this globe. 
But unfortunately, many people don't think in that way. They just think that that's only a waste resource that is being thrown up. So why should we really bother about it? Why should we spend time and money on that? Let us buy a fresh inventory. Let us buy a fresh resource altogether. In this process, we try to overspend the budget and we also try to create a serious impact against the nature. So what we are now trying to address is that we want to build a composite business area, a composite model altogether, where we are able to see that moment that person, that industry is able to have a collectible inventory factor, collectible area where you can reduce the impact towards the environment and the functionality. Because once you start collaborating with the economy, once you start putting your hands together, in terms of understanding the economy from a micro level perspective, you will be able to understand and appreciate that it is the cooperative psychology, it is joining hands together, which can create a better economy rather than individually claiming the top spot in a Fortune 500 magazine. So what I would like to say here is that when you are going to manufacture please collaborate with your partners. Please find out if there can be some suitable areas where you can join together and create a betterment for the society. Now, most of them feel that collaboration always leads to confusion. That is not true. Why? Because we have understood that these days the dependency on resources is very high. Now, probably a person who's manufacturing an electric vehicle is dependent on battery. The person who's manufacturing Manufacturing a battery is dependent on lithium or any other kind of chemical. The person who is dependent on manufacturing that chemical is again dependent on some mineral wealth altogether. So you can see that there's a whole lot of psychological chain that goes inside this. So unless and until we understand the chain, unless and until we understand the entire functionality as one complete setup, as one complete authentication altogether, we will not be able to deliver as promised. So that's why I would say that this is the best time that we collaborate, we join hands together and sell the services as far as possible. Now, the next thing that we are talking about is the responsible consumption. Now, this is very important. Rational consumption and choice of products according to the social and ecological needs. India has a very, very large consumer base. Nobody can deny it because you have a population of 130 crore plus. Now, in India, what happens is that we consume not just based on rationality, we consume based on the quantifiable factors. Now, there is a huge concept of joint family system in India and it so happens that we always tend to overspend, we always tend to go above the budget believing that we need more and more for tomorrow because we are more futuristic in nature. So we believe that the consumption also needs to be futuristic. So many a times what we do is that we spend a lot of money in buying goods again and again and make that market even more consumable in terms of consumer driven altogether. Now this propels the production to a higher level which means the production has to depend on raw materials. Again, that effect goes back to the environment, which means to say that you are producing more and more. Now, that will not be acceptable going forward. We want a system that is able to go on a rational basis. So that's why we want you to understand the social and ecological factors and then go in for the consumption. The next thing that we are talking about is extending the duration of use where I was talking about the repair, reuse and repurpose altogether, which is a very, very important functionality as we are talking about today. Why is that repair reuse is coming into picture? Probably down the lane, our generation has forgotten to understand, to accept and to believe the factor that yes, things can be repaired. It can be brought back to life. And there is something which we can do in terms of reusing the entire concept. But the generation clearly believes on this factor that once a particular product life is over, just throw it away and get something new. Do not keep hampering on that same article or the item n number of times. 
But today the call of the nature is something like this. We cannot keep on producing it and throwing it back on the nature. Why? Because every moment, every minute, every second, what we are going to see is that the dumps going on a higher scale altogether. And you will be able to see that people are actually going on in terms of buying spree. So what we want to do is that we want to extend the use of duration. We want to extend the durability. Nowadays, when you look into a mobile charger where people say that a particular mobile charger can actually make your phone work for three or four days a particular mobile a laptop can run for more than 28 hours what we are trying to talk about here is that we want the consumer to extend the usage with the minimum resource we don't want the system to come back and say that we are dependent again again use electricity use water use all the resources that are available and make the nature completely depleted. No, we are not in for it. We actually want a system that is more reusable. The next thing, recycling the treatment and recovery of materials that are contained and collected. You need to worry about it. Why? Because recycling is going to become the order of the day where people are going to talk about how to build a system that is more contained, how you can recycle the materials, how you can use it again and again, and how you can rather build a system which is even more convenient in nature. So at some point of time, I'm definitely going to be in for this particular activity where I'm going to definitely say that recycling is going to be the order of the day at, at the end of the entire scenario. Followed by environmental, the, the benefits that we are going to talk about. The first advantage of a circular environment is that is the protection of the environment where you're going to reduce the waste and emissions of greenhouse gases and systemizing in terms of recycling and ending the plant obsolescence. So you are definitely going to reduce on the factors like when we are talking about the emission factors, the waste factors, all those greenhouse emissions, all those things are going to come down and we are going to make a greener society altogether, followed by the economic effort. Another huge benefit of the circular economy, it stimulates innovation and boosts the economic growth, which means it's going to provide employment, it's going to give a better revenue cycle, and it's also going to give you an enhanced competitiveness for the national companies. So what we are going to see is that if we are able to produce better products at cheaper cost with a longer duration with an extended durability and an extended usage so that you are able to build a better nation in the long run followed by the social part of it in addition to the circular economy creates jobs and enable people to save money cutting on the unemployment poverty which is the key area of the sustainable goal somewhere down the lane we need to understand that we don't want the unemployment wave to again hit the earth we don't want that poverty stricken areas to grow wide and vast what we want is the depletion of poverty, depletion of unemployment. And we want to see a sustainable earth where everybody is able to make a potential earning out of his job. And the job should be in such a way that it is skill based. It is able to give a long run value add to what that person has been doing. So that's where I'm looking into it as an entire impactful source where I'm able to look the circular economy can create a very valuable impact in the long run taking care of pollution and climate change so that we can have a better sustainable future. With this, I come to the end of this presentation. I hope and believe that all the facts that have been presented through this presentation will be of great value at both from a theory as well as from the practical stand. In the upcoming sessions, we are going to talk about the sustainable production and consumption with an aim towards the sustainable development goals. But until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.